Nimki Ajibakan, Nimki means thunder, and Ajibik means a rock mountain. So, and the Ong at the end, it means the place of, or where the people are. Nimki Ajibakan is a cultural community of like-minded people that are working towards sustainability, cultural revitalization, which includes language and, of course, land-based activities. And it's also a Anishinaabek exercise of what land back is. And so Nimki Ajbakong is lots of things, I guess, but most importantly, it's getting back to our roots on the land and, you know, just trying to rekindle a lot of the things that were lost. The, the camp here, the original intent, that wasn't to be govern, government funded or it was all, all done ourselves. Uh, you know, we used to live in uh, prospector tents here. We did for the first year. When we first started up, we were in prospector tents, you know, with, with this, this vision, this, this dream, um, you know, of what's possible, right? You know, something that, you know, we can, you know, exist here and, you know, we can just um, be Nishnavik. We wanted to do land space stuff. We wanted to reclaim that. Uh, we wanted to be able to hunt fish, uh, you know, learn about medicines, you know, uh, land space practices, harvesting, you know, uh, traditional crafting, stuff like that. So this was the place to do it. We, we cooked outside all the time. There was only a few of us. The uh, camp itself was moving to different places, different houses and they wanted something permanent. Our role here is just being part of that growing movement to reconnect back to the land and revitalize our languages. So it actually brings us back into traditional thinking. You know, everybody kind of plays a role and so everybody kind of has a specialty and they're all leaders, you know, and so that's what's so great about this camp is that you know, everybody has a special gift that contributes. Well, to run this camp, it takes a lot of uh, heart <laughs> and a lot of like spirit and a lot of um, goodwill. We were just starting with nothing and, and then we, we fundraised, we crowdsourced. It's been really, really amazing, all of the support that we've received from, from all over. Uh, we, we built the entire place, like not one stick of uh, wood anywhere here was purchased with any government funding at all. So that's pretty exciting, we're proud of that. This studio that we're doing, it's been a journey, like four or five years of steady fundraising, steady planning. The studio itself and the solar has been a huge job. It takes a long time to, you know, pull these things together to, to get the funding in place and get everybody in place and then we, we have to get a solar company to come in and you know all those things but it's happening now so it's been two years and Sacred Earth Solar and Indigenous Climate Action are doing such good work. They're empowering us because then we're, we don't have dependency on fossil fuels. We won't have um, you know, we'll be, we'll be able to keep on going and be independent here. When Christy and Isaac asked for help in solarizing their art build, I was so happy to be able to support because I really believe in what they're doing at the camp. It's such a breath of fresh air that to see what they're doing and so we were very happy to be able to support and work in solidarity to increase the collective power of our peoples. To see people come together, you know, that share that vision, um, and, and want to put in the work has it's been, it's been amazing, you know, it's, it's been inspiring and, and hopeful and, uh, you know, we, it's, it's like a reassurance that, you know, we're doing, you know, what, uh, what we need to do. 